Hi, my name's Tony Phillips. I'm the historian of the Mendocino Coast Model Railway and Historical Society. We're standing in front of our hundred year old building which houses our layout, the Mendocino Coast Railroad and Navigation Company. Today I'm going to try to show you the differences between rod and shay locomotives and more importantly show a movie that our youngest member Haven shot of our shay locomotive in operation around our layout. I'm standing in front of California Western Railroads, the skunk trains, steam locomotive number 45. I'm going to show you how 45 runs and compare it to how the Shays were designed to run and what the differences are. CWR's number 45 was built by Baldwin Locomotive Company. She's a rod engine. A rod engine takes the steam from the steam dome up here, brings the steam down, 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 down here to the pistons. The pistons are pushed to and fro by the steam and actuate the rods. And the rods, in turn, turn the wheels. So, 45 is a rod engine. The chaise, which we're going to talk about today, are geared engines, vastly different from the rod engine. We've moved out from uh, the engine house belonging to the California Western Railroad into the building next door, which houses our layout, which you can see behind me. On our layout, we have two uh, Shea locomotives, which we'll talk about in more detail in just a moment. The background to the Shea locomotive starts with a man called Ephraim Shea. He was born in 1819 and lived in the Midwest. He was a logger and was very bothered by the fact that the locomotives of the day, which were very small, were not very powerful and didn't really uh, suit the work that they were needed for, which was going into the woods and taking the wood out. So Ephraim Shea, like many people of his day, decided that there was a better mousetrap and that he could design a locomotive which was far, far, far better suited to the needs of the woodsman. And he did produce such a locomotive. His first locomotive was very crude. It consisted of an upright boiler, you can see the funnel here, probably taken from ships. Um, the boilers were very simple affairs and they fired two pistons, which you can see here. Now note the direction of the pistons. The pistons on the Shea, as you'll see, were go up and down in vast contrast to the, the rod engines of number 45, which go this way. At one end of his uh, very simple engine was the wood which fired the boiler and at the other end was the tank which held the water which went into the boiler to provide the steam for the pistons. This whole locomotive was probably no more than about 20 feet long and probably at best weighed about 15 tons. Very small. Even by the, the standards of the day it was quite small. Master builder Colin Menzies, a member of the club and reluctantly who has deceased, built an exquisite model of one of the early Shays. Here you can see his model. The wood at one end, the tank with the water at the other, the two pistons going up and down. And this is the important part. The pistons pushed through these pieces of, of metal here, which were called jack shafts, transferred the power to here and here, which were gears, which in turn turned the geared uh, uh, wheels at both ends of the, of the locomotive. Whilst the speed was very low, the torque 
was incredibly high. So this engine would pull uh, with extreme ease loads that could not be pulled by this rod locomotive. Both of the wheels turned. So the Shea could go round very sharp curves, which a rod engine cannot do. Before we go and see the two electric locomotives of the Shea that we have, I'd like you to have a quick look at the superb uh, film that our youngest club member Haven made of our Shea operating a large consist around the layout. We're now standing at the far end of our layout in front of the two electric Shays that are owned by the club. Ephraim Shea, when he was designing his locomotive, was trying to surmount problems that were confronting every logging railroad. Logging railroads traditionally ran alongside streams. The reason for that was that was where the, the least amount of grade was encountered water tending to be flat and so you avoided all the hills by running along the, the side of the streams. The other advantage clearly was that there was a ready supply of water for the boiler. So going along the side of the stream helped. But streams don't run in straight lines so the curves on the railway were, were quite sharp which needed to be handled with ease. The second thing that the Shea needed to be able to do was to be able to go up a grade. The rod engines rarely go up grades more than 2%. 2% is considered the absolute limit. Ephraim Shea wanted a locomotive that would easily go up a 10% grade. There's a heck of a lot of difference between a 2% and a 10% grade. Now don't forget that the locomotive not only had to take itself up a 10% grade, but it also had to take a full set of freight cars behind it. More importantly, the, freight, the engine was always put at the front on the downhill trip. So you didn't want the runaway train to occur. And the Che locomotive was particularly suited to be at the front of a freight train consisting of very large logs because A, it didn't go more than 15 miles an hour, whatever the hell you did, and secondly, the torque was so great it would actually act as a brake if you kept up the steam. So the, st the locomotive ha um, met many of the requirements. It was also very versatile in as much as you could fire it with wood, you could fire it with oil, and you could fire it with coal, depending on what you wanted. 2,771 Shea locomotives were produced. Ephraim Shea did not produce them. He sold the rights to the Lima, that's L-I-M-A, uh, company, and they were the ones who produced the Shea locomotives. They produced Shea locomotives in every shape and size that you can possibly imagine. They sold small ones, which have what is called two trucks. One truck here, two trucks here. So this one has three pistons. Sometimes there were two pistons and two trucks. More powerful engines, such as this one, had three pistons and two, two, tr two trucks. A bigger version of this added a third truck underneath the tender. And the tender gave much greater supply of water without re-tanking re up. So we have one truck, two trucks, three trucks, but again only three pistons. This was a pretty common version of the truth in the Midwest and East. This was a much more common version of the truth in this part of the world. This picture 
is taken from the L.E. White Company's operations at uh, Greenwood, or Elk as it's now called, along the coast. The Greenwood um, operation had three uh, shays, and they were immensely popular and incredibly powerful. The other great advance of advantage of the shay, as is documented by the Ellie White Company, was the fact that all the running parts were easily accessible. You could oil them on a daily basis, and if anything went wrong, everything you wanted to know was hanging on the outside. The 84 locomotives that still exist of the Shea, and that's quite a remarkable number, you can actually ride on two of them in the relative local area. This one is at the south end of Yosemite and is on the Sugar Pine and Yosemite Railroad. And there is another one at Felton at the big uh, trees uh, uh, train. The great thing about riding on a Shea locomotive is the noise. It has a very, very distinctive noise. And when you're going at 10 miles an hour, the noise and the sound and the smell feels like you're going at 100 miles an hour. We're very lucky that one of our younger members, Haven, took some really remarkable uh, movies of this locomotive in operation and that's what we will show you next. One rather interesting note is that Ephraim Shea, late in life, decided that he wanted his own Shea locomotive and so he had one built for himself. This, so far as I know, is the only picture or the only picture we have of it. Really neat locomotive. It has 15 inch uh, ran on 15 inch track and was incredibly small. So now you can see Haven's work and you can see just how powerful our lo locomotive is in pulling quite a large consist around the 1.7 scale miles of track that we have here on the Mendocino Coast Model Railroad um, operation. I was a boy in the days of the train. I'd sit by the tracks on a long summer day, and I'd wave to the brakeman, and he'd wave back at me while the thunder clouds rolled out of East Tennessee. But the dreams of a boy. Disappear when you grow Then though I may dream The railroads are gone The ties they are rotted in And the track shot to hell Along with my dreams Then the old railroad bell In my dreams I'd ride the rails to California Working diners and farms along the way Or I'd hop a ride to hide across the border With a black-eyed girl beside me all the way But now the mountains are silent And the railroads are gone 